So for any of us too, um, it's a much more complicated experiment. We spent years uh, doing all sorts of testing and development of the various detectors. Uh, we initially pre-integrated them with the uh, SDA vacuum case or the flight spare vacuum case at CERN just to make sure that everything worked properly before the final testing and integration. Next slide. Uh, then the entire experiment was taken to a thermal vacuum test at SSEC, the ESA Research Facility in the Netherlands. Next slide. And then uh, we took it through EMI, electromagnetic interference, and electromagnetic compatibility testing, also at SSEC in the Virginia. Um, finally, tests were done in CERN to determine the performance of the experiment itself in a test team, a uh, part of the CERN, and Professor King can tell you much more about this than I can. Next. And then finally, MS was loaded up into a U.S. Air Force C-5 at the airport. Next. And flown to the Kennedy Space Center. Next. And here it is being you know, offloaded at the shuttle landing facility, loaded on the flatbed, and into the uh, SSPF, into footprint 7. So some of the things that were done here at Kennedy, we had several other pieces of hardware uh, to complete the payload. Uh, one of the things we did was install the payload attach system, which is the pass that's this hardware right here. This provides a mechanical interface to the space station. Also, as Bob pointed out, this slide, this is the keyless assembly that goes down at the bottom of the payload, and this is one of the interfaces, mechanical interfaces to the space shuttle. Okay. Um, many other components that we have to integrate the payload to make it operate on the space shuttle and space station. This one is used to align the payload as, as it is berthed with the space station. Um, this, there's two cameras here that look at the target so we get properly aligned during the version. Um, and then this assembly here is called the umbilical mechanism assembly. Uh, this is what gives us the power, command, and data interfaces on the space station. Uh, to make sure that all the interfaces with the space station work exactly as it should, we tested AMS with a simulator of the attached site on the truss of the station. You can see this is it being lowered down and then finally integrated with it. This verifies all of the mechanical, electrical, and command data interfaces. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, there are two graphical fixtures on AMS. One is the power video graphical fixture. This is the one that the space station arm will grab. And we call it a video graphical fixture because that's what it gets a signal from the camera system that I showed you earlier. And that's how it does the alignment. And then for the arm on the shuttle, it's the flight reasonable grapple fixture. That's what takes it out. Okay. And lots and lots of thermal blankets. There are a total of 320 thermal blankets on AMS, and this is uh, the last one to be installed here at KSC. Okay. Um, to get power data and command uh, capability on the space shuttle, we can interface with the multi operator electrical and vehicle. This is, you can see it um, integrated here. This connection right here with the cover. This this is how I'll be attached on the shuttle, and then when the AMS is ready to be put on the space station, this one is released, and then the AMS is taken out of the payload bay of the shuttle. Um, one of the other things we've been doing is to make sure that we're compatible with the space shuttle and space station and all, all the uh, centers in between that have to deal with the tremendous amount of data that AMS generates. We do simulations uh, through here, KSC, through Marshall, through Johnson Space Center, and we make sure that everything works. And we do simulations with the crew and their control centers to make sure that um, we learn how to function well together. <coughs> Finally, AMS will be put in pain with cancer as Bob said, we'll go in, the, in there next Tuesday, and then we'll go out to the pad and be placed in the aft bay of the space shuttle. Next. And then some of the final things we have to do is move the uh, covers from the star factors on either side of AMS. This is just one of the uh, analyses we do to make sure that we have the proper access to do the task. Okay. And of course, once we're on orbit, one of the other things you have to consider is that AMS has a permanent magnet. So there's other things that might be operating here that could be affected by that magnetic, magnetic field. So this shows a map of magnetic field in the 300 Gauss line, which is important for the extravehicular activities of the space suit to make sure there's no, no issues with that. And since that's actually inside the enclosure of AMS, that doesn't pose a problem. And also the 10 gauss lines inside the FRGF and PDGF, the graphical fissures, to make sure there's no issues with the shuttle RMS and the space station RMS. Next page. So AMS is, uh, as you'll see today, is sitting down in the, uh, 
high base of this building, and it is ready to go on the space shuttle. We're ready for this flight. Yes, it is very apparent. Good question because uh, the first question we had when we started working on this back in 1994 can you take this incredibly complex, delicate instrument and shake it like crazy as you launch on a space shuttle? Um, we had to make modifications to the detectors to make sure that it would withstand the launch, but at the same time maintain the performance of the physics the experiment and the science that they wanted to do. So, yes, this, this has gone through extensive analysis and testing over the years. That's one of the main reasons why we flew. Yes, there is. Uh, let's see. Uh, these are the shields here, and there's some on the other side. And then <coughs> we've done extensive analysis on this to see how much shielding our radiators is actually providing for the electronics, which are like behind it here and here. And you know, we do statistical analysis to determine what sort of damage these electronics or sensitive instruments might receive over a decade. And with that, you, you do redundancy on Sometimes as many as four fold redundancy on this experiment to make sure that if one gets hit, then the second one gets hit, even if the third one gets hit, it can still withstand and operate properly. Okay, I wish I were just It's fully up and operational, it's about 2,500 watts. Can you talk about uh, why you're locating it in, in the position you are on the ISS? This is the S3 upper inboard truss. Um, first of all, there are a total of six attached sites available on the space station. This is just one of them for payloads. <coughs> so since it's the only attached site available, you have to locate it there. Now, the reason we tilt it is twofold. Um, this isn't the best view for this because you can see the solar arrays are rotating about this joint here. So if AMS were to point straight up, and this is exactly what the bottom side. So if we were to point straight up, the solar arrays would actually pass through AMS to see the view. Could possibly distort the science. So one of the reasons why we tilted it in 12 degrees 
was to have less of those solar arrays on the AMC Steel Review. In addition, when you integrate 